Paul instructs us in a most interesting way what the church should do in troubling times of their nation, how they should address the situation. What do you do when a nation is in trouble? Um, maybe persecuting the church, um, not honoring God and institutional thinking. And here, here's what Paul tells us to do. And so we live in those, in those times right now, in my opinion. Here's what he tells you to do. I'm in 1 Timothy 2, and I'm looking at verses 1 and 2. And then we're going to look at 3 and 4. I'm reading from the King James Version. He says, I exhort, therefore... Or I urge you, brethren, I exhort you, therefore, that first of all, isn't that interesting? First of all. And then he tells you to pray, but he gives you four different words for prayer. In other words, watch this. He says, first of all, supplications, that's one form of prayer. Prayer, that's another form of prayer. Intercession, that's another form of prayer. And the giving of thanks, that's a fourth. He told you to pray four different ways. Now watch what you're praying about. For kings, here we have presidents. And for all that are in authority, that would go all the way down to Mayor of Moody. That we, watch this, and this is why we do this. Now, listen, he didn't just say to pray. Do you understand that? He told you to pray four specific prayers. Do you understand that? He told you supplications in the King James. He said supplications, entreaties, probably New American Standard is going to say entreaties. Then he gives you prayer, which is the typical word for prayer. That's the, how do you pray and get an answer. Intercessions and the giving of thanks and the attitude of gratitude. Be made for all men, for kings, for all that are in authority. And here's why. So that you, as you said here today, so that you may lead a quiet, peaceful life in godliness and honesty or, or dignity. Words to distinguish four different types of prayer that was essentially needed uh, for all in authority. You understand it? For kings and everybody down to the, in our nation, it would be from the president all the way down to the mayor of your city, etc., city council, all that, all in authority over you. Now, the first word that is translated in the King James, supplications, or in the NAS, entreaties, is an interesting word in the Greek language. It's desis. D, it's D-E-E-S-I-S. -E -E this word means that translated to other other aspects of the English in treaty means to pray for specific needs. And then the King James translated supplicates, supplication, specific needs. What would they be? Remember who we're talking about, authorities over you. This morning I was at breakfast and I, it was interesting to me uh, the waitress waiting on me uh, talked about the overload, we all know this, but the overload on the employees that are trying to do the best they can with little. And how there seems to be an unthankful heart about it. Okay? Okay? in the authority structure of, their na of, of her company. 
And there was my first prayer request, a, a special, a specific need within an authority structure. If that company doesn't wake up, they're going to lose the good employees they have because they're overworked and underpaid and unthankful. So I look for that stuff. I, I watch the news like you as little as I can. But that's the first word, supplication. You've got to pray for specific needs for your nation. The kind of specific things that could change to help people. Gas prices, food prices, things of these nature that are the basic commodities. This is an easy thing to pray about today. But it's specific needs. The second word that's used is prayer. Now that all these words are prayer. The second word, though, is used as pros UK, and it's an interesting word because it, it is the word for prayer. It's the standard Greek word for prayer. And when you find that word, it means that you know that there is a way to pray so that you can get answers. For example, you pray to the Father, this is a way your, your, your prayer has to be properly addressed to get like a piece of mail. It has to be properly addressed to get there. Otherwise, you better have a return address on it. Right? So you pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit, according to the will of God. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. When he says pray, that's what he means. He means that you know how to pray to get the, the prayer to the throne of God and get the answer back. That's the word prayer. But see, he used the word supplication first. Then he went like, mm, remember, I'm talking about the model prayer never changes, even though the request might. Specific needs, for example. Then he goes to the word intercession. This word means that you're praying on behalf of somebody else. Praying on behalf of someone else. Intercessing, interceding for them. Right now, my sister's going through some really difficult time having just lost her husband. She's into some really difficult health issues. And it's just taking the wind out of her sails, so to speak. And so this word would come in there. I need to intercede on her behalf because she's not doing well on her side of it. You understand what I mean? She's just kind of like this poor waitress today. She just overloaded with too many things at one time, doesn't know how to sort them out, doesn't know really how to pray for what, how do I pray and what am I praying for? And when I, when I find somebody like that, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. There's a special word for prayer to intercede on their behalf. You can see it in the Old Testament a great deal. Moses stands up and he prays so long people have to help him. Why? He's interceding. He's interceding in warfare. He's interceding in warfare. And then we have the final word, the word that has grace, Eucharistia. And it has the word grace in it. It means a great attitude about grace. We call it the attitude of gratitude. Listen. You should be thankful for what you have. As bad as things are, do you not have any bright spot in your life? Before I left the restaurant this morning, I tried to single this lady and when she finally brought me my check. Is there anything that you're thankful for in your life today that I could mention to the, my father when I talk to him today. Because it's important that she find some attitude of gratitude in her life. I say that to my sister. 
I, I'm going to offer prayer for you today, and I'm going to cover everything I know that would be important to your life. Is there anything I can thank God for in your name? So I think that's important. I think it's important that they go, they, you know, it's easy to dwell on those things that are difficult in our life, and sometimes we miss the, some of the joys that we have. Um, you know? So, notice there are, there are four specific prayers in 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. Now watch the bonus you get. Watch the bonus you get. Verse 3 and 4. Watch this. He said, first of all, at the end of verse 2, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. And watch what he says in 3 and 4. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. You know why we pray for the leadership in our life? So that we have the freedom to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ without going to prison or have our head chopped off. You understand how important that is? I mean, we've lived in such a free nation for such a long time, and, and we ought to thank God every day for that. We as a church, if you look at the martyred church today across the world, this is like heaven. We live in what we would, the rest of the world would call heaven. We live in a pros, prosperous nation. We have the freedom to speak. Uh, we have the, in the church, we have the freedom to preach the gospel of Christ and see people saved. And their lives will be changed dramatically over a period of time. A and what a journey that is. So that's my 4th of July for you.